Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for joining today's webinar session on how to manage equipment device calibration digitally with the help of QDMS and Acumatica ERP system. Today we'll be talking about how you can manage your calibration operations in a digital environment. of Beam3 International. Today I have my colleagues with me, and today we'll be covering these calibration related subjects in terms of how you can actually operate it digitally, as well as how you can actually approach it from the compliance point of view. Let me introduce my colleagues. I have Alex Kvartorov with us from MRAS Consulting. Alex is a certified ISO 9001 auditor, auditor, and he'll be talking about fundamentals of calibration management from the ISO compliance point of view. Also, we have Sam Watt with us, he is our previous software engineer from our engineering team. And Sam will be demonstrating QDMS, quality and calibration management software, interacting with Acumatica ERP system. And we have our product manager who can boss with us. So together, we'll be presenting you how to manage calibration operations digitally in this digital age and how you can actually adapt digital transformation, especially nowadays, many companies working remotely due to COVID-19 pandemic. So remote operation management, record keeping and documentation is more important than before. So we believe that's gonna be a very beneficial webinar, very informative webinar for you. So let me talk about EMS first of all. We like to capabilities of QDMS, our quality risk audit and compliance management software. So before jumping into presentations, we'd like to show you live how you can actually manage your calibration operations in a digital environment. So uh, uh, before I hand it over to my colleague Sam, uh, uh, some brief information about QDMS, uh, our quality and compliance management software. Uh, we have been developing uh, QDMS uh, since 1998, we have more than 1,000 corporate uh, customers and increasing every single month. And we have more than 1 million professional users. And this system basically is very uh, scalable, which is uh, very important for companies that are actually uh, growing, as well as also needs a scale when they're actually managing their operations. So we also have uh, repeatable organizations using QDMS, as you see on the screen. I listed some of them. Uh, we'll talk more about QDMS as to its benefits and its uh, capability. Uh, today, during this demonstration session, we'll be talking about calibration management. We'll be talking about uh, control document management capabilities of QDMS because you're going to need to be, uh, you need to be managing your uh, documents as to SOPs, uh, instructions, and how you need to be doing calibration, how you need to be uh, following the procedures. So that is also an important part of the system that we need to uh, show you. Uh, in addition, we'll be talking about reports and dashboard available in the system. So before further ado, I'd like to invite Sam, our previous software engineer, to our virtual stage. And Sam will be actually uh, showing and telling about QDMS and calibration management in the digital environment. And then we'll continue with Alex as to fundamentals of calibration management. Sam, if you are ready, would you like to take over the screen? Sure, and let me share my screen, and let me know if you can see that. I if, can see. And I can, uh, yep. Perfect, thank you. Anytime. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you for joining today's webinar. This is Sam from Bimzo International. I'm the pre-sales software engineer, uh, who based in New York as well. So QDMS is a certified software that's integrating with Acumatica. So, uh, besides pulling and pushing the data from or to Acumatica to our system, QDMS, actually, QDMS can also work in the same page of Acumatica. Like, this is my Acumatica homepage, and I can connect to QDMS on the same page in the web browser, so that on your left, you can manage your workspace and all the um, activities that you want to have in Acumatica and also in, on the same screen you can connect to QDMS and uh, 
dive into the modules in QDMS as well. So this is the homepage of QDMS. You can find all the pending tasks and also requests for approval right after you log in. So we can go to this widget, for example, and then start proceeding with this uh, request, which is a, a request for uh, approval request for the document. So I can get a quick connection, and this is how we can make sure you will not miss any important task that is assigned to your account. QDMS is a permission-based system, which means not everyone can see everything. Typically, like to the main menu of the user. So they will see what they are supposed to do based on the permission that is granted to their account, based on the role, position, profession, department, or group. Since now I'm logging in as the admin so that I have the full control of the system, including the end user um, menu and also the administrator menu. And we have the integration, a fundamental integration with Archimedica. For example, the employee's information, a vendor, product. So those information are pulled in from Archimedica and fit our system. And technically, we can integrate with any fields that you can see in Archimedica. And today, I will show you how to use QDMS to manage your calibration operation digitally and also how you can manage your documents, for example, your policies, and also all the related documents to your machinery or your devices into this control document management module. And let's get started. First of all, we go to the device management system, as known as calibration module. In this module, you can divide, uh, define your device, for example, your vehicle or your machine, you can create your own category and define a new device in this in this module. So what you can choose is a device category, and then you can grant this uh, the name of this device or uh, asset. In addition, you can also define the cost of this, um, for example, vehicle, and QDMS support multi currency so that you can pick and choose the currency for the cost of this asset. And if needed, you can put the note right here and connect this with this um, asset or equipment. If needed, you can also attach any document from your local drive, for example, the instruction, the handbook, so that you can upload right here from your local drive and this document is connected with this device that we record in QDMS. In your device, then you can save this, and this device will be added or updated in the system. In addition, you can also set up the measurement constant, which means what we want to check. And they can be in different UOM, unit of measurement, and also you can put the reference value here as well. So all the calibration will be based upon this measurement that you have set up, and also you can create a different operation type, which means what kind of calibration operation that you will have for this device. So this is how we can set up a new device or new uh, asset in the system. And then the operator, they can fulfill the operations. So they can either, they can pick and choose what we have uh, defined it as the operation type. And then we can also assign the device to this operation, which means which devices that are going to have the calibration operation. And also you can pick and choose the calibration location, which considering we have multiple locations, so that we can pick and choose right here for example, now it is going to happen in Washington, D.C., or we can have that in California, in Texas, for example. After that, we can save this, and this responsible person will receive a notification in QDMS and also in his or her email inbox. 
So now we have uh, an operation is created in terms of calibration. Then we have to take, carry out certain action and generate our calibration report. This report will have its own unique certificate number. And also you can pick and choose the device action and put any supportive information in this report. In case you want to attach, for example, your the photo of the calibration or after the or the device after calibration, you are more than welcome to attach it from your local drive to QDMS. At the last step, we can publish it and close this uh, calibration record, and this record will be saved in the database of QDMS. And any time you can use the reporting tool to create the ready-made report. For example, the report of job order, or the device list, or cost report. Those will show you in the table. And for example, like order work order. It's the order work order, and you can see what is the operation date, and also the next op uh, calibration date as well. In addition, you can export this report into Excel, or PDF for sharing with any responsible parties. Considering like the auditor of um, the standards that you're playing with, and the auditor asks you to show um, all the calibration watch, uh, operation or all the calibration record, so that you can use this reporting tool and create a re report in a minute and show this to the auditor. Auditor will be impressed how responsive and how quickly that you can prepare what he or she want to see by using QDMS. And next, we go to the control document management module. In this module, you can manage your control documents. For example, uh, order reference for your device and also your SOP and uh, like your policies. So those can be managed by using this module. And in this module, you can upload the new document, start the revision process, like update the version of your documents, and also manage the folder structure so that you can have different folders by, uh, based on department or locations and so on in QDMS. So in terms of reading your document in QDMS, you do not need any other software or application to read your document. Since QDMS support different file format that you upload in the system, it can be a WordPad, a Notepad, a Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, a video, audio, or Kit file. Those will be shown in the built-in browser of QDMS. We also call it BIMSO Viewer. So simply, you can see the document list, and you can put this in the viewer. Now you can read your document in the built-in browser, and also you can find your version and all the document information under this page. You can find this document code, the name, the version number, and also the creation date and revision date as well. With the permission, you can get back to the previous version of your document so that you can keep comparing what is changed in this version compared with the previous version. And under the permission matrix tab, you can see what kind of permission is granted to the users or user groups. Right here, you can see for this user like myself i have the permission of reading it printing it revising it but not getting back to the previous version or deleting the document and to the um like managing director leon kennedy he can only read and print the document but not revising getting back to the previous version or deleting the document so while you are uploading a new document or revising an existing document, 
you can manage this permission matrix accordingly. Also, you can put the users or user groups in this distribution list. Whoever in this list, they will receive a notification in QDMS and also in their email inbox regarding the up uh, the newly upload of this document or revise or the revision of this document. You can also find who is or are the approvers in for this document. So when this document is going to be uploaded or revised, then the user in this list will receive an approval request. And they have to review this request and either approve or reject it before this document to be published in the system, which means to be viewable to other users. At last, all the has all the activities will be recorded in the log of QDMS. And you can see who did what on what day. Those activities will be recorded with the information of the date, the time, the uh, action type, and also the username. So you're more than welcome to use this audit trail to keep tracking all the activities that have uh, that is occurred in your system, and also against these documents as well. So this is how we can read an existing document in QDMS. For example, the policy and how we can create a new document. And by using this module, we can create a new document and upload it to, the, to this module. And first of all, we can pick and choose the folder that we want to put our new document. So saying we have a new policy and we want to upload into the system so that everyone can see this document. And then we can grant it an, a unique document code. For example, this is a DC uh, with a unique document book. And your name, you can have any name that you want to have in the system, or it can be the same as the others. What has to be unique, again, is the document code, because this is the only way that the system knows which document you are interacting with. And after that, as I mentioned, while we are uploading a new document, we can manage the permission matrix. For example, we can add a new user and grant him, like Andy, grant him the permission. And as for Andy, he can only read the document, but not the rest, so that we can uncheck those boxes and go to the next page or next tab. Is the distribution list. So now we can decide who will receive a notification once this document is uploaded. So right here, we can add, for example, all users. And once this document is published in the system, all users will receive a notification regarding this newly uploaded document. And right here, you can also see the approval list as well. So you can put more user into this approval process. For example, I want to invite Bob as one of the approver. And as now you can see, Bob is added and at level one. And what does, this, what does it mean is considering it the approval pyramid. The smaller the number is, the higher it is in the pyramid. So let me do like with a graph. So we have a pyramid as an approval flow. So which means we will first ascend to the level one. And after the approval that we have at the level one, then this request will be sent to level zero. And finally, we can upload our document to the system. But before that, I'm going to delete Andy in the approval list in order to smoothen this demonstration. And now we can upload our document from our local drive. As now we can upload our document, as I mentioned, we can uh, QDMS support different 
um, different file formats that you upload to the system. So for example, I am going to upload one of that, which is a Word file. And you will see the files upload successfully in a minute. And again, we can send this request to the approval flow. And we are going to send this out. And who will be the approver? Which will be myself as well, since I'm the only person in the approval list. And now you can see the message is it has been sent for approval to the user show as below. As I'm now the approver, I can find the approval request on my home screen and I can get a quick connection to this new document. So that I can go get a quick connection here and reveal all the information that the request to punch in in this request, like the document name, uh, the permission that he sent, and also the description list. After that, on the top right, we can either approve or reject it. If we reject it, you have to enter the reason why you reject, you reject this request and send back to the requester. So this is how we can keep, make sure the requester make the update accordingly and based upon the requirement of the approver or the high management. After that, we can approve it and this document will be published in the system. And any time we can use the search engine in the system and find this document and read it in the built-in browser. So now I, it is just approved and it is published and ready for use. So we can come to the modules and see if our document is ready in the folder. We upload it under the standard folder and we can use the search bar provided on the top. So let's say DCWB, this is the keyword. And you can see right here, this is our document so that we can open this up and show this in the built-in browser of QDMS. And, okay. So now QDMS is getting out the Word file and it is, has been shown in the built-in browser. And this is a side note as well as QDMS has a modular structure, which means you can pick and choose the modules that you want to have and deploy it on your server, which means you don't have to, you're not be bonded to have all the modules in QDMS. And actually based upon what regulation or standard that you are applying with, you can pick and choose uh, the modules accordingly. And in this, in QDMS, you can also have the dashboard in order to visualize all your real time data in the widget of, in this dashboard. So it will give you an overview how the performance is in your company or department and the KPI of your company as well. So this is one of the example that we put together in our demo environment so that you can have a dashboard and those will be, sh all your real-time data will be shown in a table, in a bar chart or in a pie chart. You are more than welcome to use this um, dashboard and export this dashboard into Excel or PDF file for sharing with any responsible parties or preparing your presentation, for example. And also you can have your own design dashboard, which you can add more widget into this dashboard or resize, reposition, or delete the widget in this dashboard, which means different user will have different dashboard based upon their preference. It's come to the end of my, of my demonstration. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the demonstration. Let me take over the screen and then we can continue with our webinar. I'll make my presentation full screen. Okay, great. 
as you've seen during the demonstration of SEM, you can manage your document calibration as well as equipment calibration records. You can, you can schedule them, you can record them, you can assign them to internal team members as well as outside service providers. So that's a great opportunity to manage calibration operations in a digital environment. That has been a great demonstration. Thank you very much, Sam. Very informative. Now, I'd like to invite Alex to our webinar session. Uh, Alex will be talking about fundamentals of calibration management from the point of ISO. And uh, we'll talk more about QDMS as well as it is benefits and features while it's actually complementing Archimedica ERP system in this digital age. Alex, are you ready? Okay. Uh, yes, I'm ready, uh, Kevin. Okay, perfect. Uh, Please continue. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much, Kevin, for inviting me uh, to make this, uh, you know, short presentation. Um, today, what I'll do is I'll introduce ISO in, in very general terms, and then I will focus on what ISO requires. Uh, an organization concerning calibration of the equipment. So, uh, first of all, let me talk about some of the ISO quality management principles, which there are seven of. Uh, obviously, the first, the most important one is the focus. Uh, the whole goal of, of the organization is to make sure that the customer is happy, uh, meaning that the customer gets the product uh, that he wants and also that's delivered on time. Then leadership. Leadership is, is very important because leadership has to make sure that all aspects of the organization is functional properly and that uh, leadership is really responsible, as you will see on the next diagram, to make sure that the quality management system is properly functioning. Then engagement of the people. Uh, everybody, whether it's the top, top management or lower level workers, they have to understand what ISO is and how each one is supposed to support that uh, process. Uh, and, and also that the people at, at the lower level, they are the most uh, knowledgeable about how they can make improvements regarding their area of responsibility. Next um, principle is process approach. Uh, ISO requires that the organization, whether you're manufacturing products or a providing a service, that you have all of your functions are established as processes and that processes are linked together for uh, the most possible efficient operation. Next one is continuous improvement. Again, very important um, ISO aspect. And you're never perfect. Um, you, there's always room for improvement. Uh, but uh, as we go to the next uh, management uh, quality management principle, your improvements have to be based on uh, evidence uh, decision uh, making, which is, in other words, is that uh, as part of your QMS, you collect data, you analyze the data, and, and then you look at, uh, you know, what the data, uh, what information it provides, and based on that data, you then decide what improvement to go after. Uh, and again, this is ongoing, so that uh, you never achieve a perfect environment, so you always are in a continuous improvement environment. And the last uh, quality management principle is relationship management. Now, uh, what it means is that uh, management has to not only be concerned strictly about running their business, but to understand all the external factors, all the external requirements, which means, you know, the customers, the regulatory uh, requirements, um, the, uh, the, the whole environment. Environment and the external environment, uh, and that's a very 
important part of making your business successful. Okay, so next slide, please. All right, this is a um, very pictorial summary of what the quality management system is, and it's called the Plan, Do, Check, Act Cycle. And that uh, was developed by uh, Deming, who was uh, a quality guru. Uh, and, and really, it uh, shows very pictorially what uh, must happen, and it ties to the ISO requirements. So on the right-hand side uh, of the screen, you see the ISO clauses. Uh, there's uh, one through ten. Now the clauses one through three are basically introduction, definitions, and, and so on. So it doesn't contain any requirements. So requirements start with clause four, and they go through ten. Now on the diagram, uh, you see some numbers uh, in parentheses, and those refer to the particular uh, ISO clause. Uh, so if you look at the left-hand side. Uh, they all refer to clause four, which is really co the contact of the organization. And you're looking at uh, customer requirements as well, and that's what drives your plan phase, which is uh, six, uh, clause six. And this is where you take and, and do all your planning, and you actually analyze your risk. Uh, and then you proceed to the next uh, stage, which is seven and eight, okay? So seven and eight are resources and operations. So resources are both your uh, your environment, your, uh, your, your uh, equipment, uh, your manpower. Uh, so it's all the, uh, the resources that you need to implement either your product or, or the service. And then operation, of course, this is where the actual work is done. Then once you, you complete your either service or product, you then go to phase or clause nine, which is performance evaluation. And what it is is you look at your product, your results, and say, well, you know, what what is wrong with it? Um, and this is all analyzed uh, through, uh, you know, data that you collect as part of all the embedded information gathered. Uh, you also get feedback from customer. Um, uh, so obviously, you, you you obviously would like to get positive feedback, but that you know doesn't always happen, and you you always get you may get uh, negative feedback, but that you should evaluate and feed into your performance evaluation, which then feeds the next uh, phase or um, number ten, which is. Called which is improvement. And now you, you look at the data, and remember I was saying about this evidence-based evidence data, and this is where you look at the collected data, and then you decide, you know, what areas uh, are subject to improvement. And then mm -hmm. once you've identified that, you go back mm -hmm. to the planning cycle, mm -hmm. and the whole process repeats itself. And you can be in, in this loop. In fact, you can be in multiple loops. Uh, simultaneously because you have different particular areas or issues uh, that you want to be uh, working on. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. And now we'll, we'll focus on uh, monitoring and measuring. Uh, obviously, um, as, as I mentioned before, uh, this is now, you know, 7.1.5, again, that's a clause within the ISO requirement. Uh, it's really calls for monitoring and measuring resources, okay? And, and now this is really where it requires you to assure that all the equipment that's being used uh, to develop your product uh, mm -hmm. or service is valid, it's up to date, and working properly. Okay, so if you don't have equipment that you can rely on, then obviously it will affect or impact the quality of your, your product. Okay, so all the measurements. Now, again, I said your part of your evaluation process is to collect data. Okay, so you, you collect, you make, you take measurements. And again, 
most likely you will need uh, various types of equipment to uh, collect that data and all of that information has to be very reliable because it must be accurate and as I mentioned before recorded to for monitoring purposes um, now the monitoring and measuring uh, resource, uh, resources is a process okay so first of all uh, you have to determine the resources needed for accurate results so that really depends on the selection of the equipment uh, and that, you know, sometimes involves a technical assessment. Uh, so you have to make sure that the equipment uh, gives you the, the accuracy that you're looking for to, to make the measurement. Then you have to provide the resources, uh, both, you know, equipment and also uh, people, manpower, to operate those equipment. Which obviously, nowadays there's a lot of automated equipment, but certainly. Uh, some equipment are still uh, manually controlled. Um, so now you have to measure and verify your uh, your products and services against the requirements. Uh, so you know the customer is expecting certain level of requirements, and now you have to make sure that you measure, and, and you now establish a certain, uh, let's say, um, area, uh, you know, certain thresholds where you, you find that those measurements are acceptable uh, or they're outside to see those thresholds and they're obviously are not acceptable. Um, so now all of that information that you collect has to be uh, documented and saved. Uh, so there's a lot of data. Uh, and again, this again, it says that all that data is to be used as evidence to make decisions later on for improvements. So obviously that data has to be not only collected but also saved and retrievable, uh, very easily retrievable uh, so that you can use it. And that, this is certainly what Sam was talking about with uh, QBMS tool, which certainly provides or gives you that capability. Now also the methods of controlling the measure equipment, that's very important that you, you have to control those pieces of equipment. Uh, and there's really three areas uh, that you have to focus on. One is calibration and verification, making sure that the equipment uh, is accurate, uh, at, you know, as compared to the standard that you're trying to measure. Uh, so obviously, there's always a, a range at which the, the, the uh, equipment, uh, the accuracy of the equipment, is, is, is functional. But now you have to know that. Uh, and make sure that that equipment operates within that acceptable range. Then you have to also safeguard the equipment, okay? Now, uh, you know, uh, engineers uh, like to play with the equipment and they like to tweak and say, oh, you know, well, I think I can make it a little better. So you have to make sure that uh, any unauthorized adjustments to the equipment uh, is, is not allowed. Uh, all right. Otherwise, you make it, all your, your data collection is, is not really valid. And then, of course, you have to repeat it, uh, repeat the measurements. And, and that again, uh, a lot of equipment uh, it clearly states um, when the calibration, what is the period, whether it's you know six months, a year, or whatever. And typically, there are labels uh, put on the equipment to identify that. The equipment is within the calibration period, and, it, and it's uh, usable. Otherwise, it's not, and it has to be calibrated. Um, so let's look at some of the um, risk assessment. And I mentioned that in uh, in phase six, in the planning phase, that you know the risks have to be addressed. Okay. So what are the risks uh, identified when you? establish a calibration process and again i think that calibration should be a process a well-established process in, in your organization so first of all i think part of that is you have to generate a matrix of all the equipment that are, are used or at least that uh, are calibration okay then uh you have to make a determination now sometimes there's a choice you can uh, do the calibration uh, in-house, 
Uh, obviously, you have to have the, the right facilities, the right test equipment, and the right personnel to do that. Or uh, this could be outsourced to some official uh, certified calibration organization. Um, so uh, somebody um, has to be responsible to track that uh, within the organization. And it's very important that uh, uncalibrated equipment, or in other words, equipment whose, uh, whose uh, calibration period expired, be, not be used to make official measurements. Uh, so this could actually negate some of the measurements that were done and, and could uh, force you to rerun uh, a, a lot of the tests. Um, so some of the, uh, the measurement, um, now traceability requirements, okay? Uh, so it's, it's very important that the data that's collected when you actually perform uh, the calibration, that it is maintained uh, in, uh, within the company. And again, QDMS is a perfect venue for, for doing that um, because now uh, as part of uh, your regular audit, your surveillance audit, uh, uh, very likely that the audit will ask for all of the uh, calibration records. Uh, and you know, you know, he wants to make sure that all of the equipment that requires calibration is, has been calibrated within the period of time that's uh, required. And also, if the equipment, let's say, is sent out for repairs, then you want to also maintain the repair record because uh, after equipment is, is, has been repaired, it may not function exactly the same way it was functioning prior to the repair. So at least you have a record of maybe of why you, you have different readings all of a sudden uh, from, you know, from period prior to the repair. Yeah. And, and then, you know, that's a way of maybe isolating some of the potential problems. So that basically covers uh, what I wanted to do on, on calibration. And again, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. And I'm, I guess I'm turning it over now to Kevin. Thank you. Alex, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you for the for the presentation. Very, very informative as always. Thank you. So until now, uh, we talk about QDMS, our quality risk audit and compliance management solution. Also, uh, we talk about how QDMS is interacting with Acumatica ERP system. We also demonstrated to you earlier so that you saw that you can actually manage your calibration operations digitally uh, on uh, QDMS uh, interacting with, with Acumatica at the same time, which is also very uh, important for companies to actually uh, perform and use. And then uh, we talk about uh, fundamentals of calibration management from the scope of uh, ISO 9001. So uh, Alex basically uh, uh, shared information, fundamental, uh, fundamental information with us as to calibration management in this digital age. Now I'd like to talk a little bit more about uh, QDMS and I'd like to talk about our company a little bit as to introduce you who we are and what we do, which is uh, something that we like to share. Normally we start with these introductions, but uh, recently we changed our setup. So we start with the demonstration and then we continue with other uh, information in our executive webinar session. So uh, let's talk about our company a little bit, and then I'll share more information about QDMS and it is interaction as well. And then we'll address your questions in, uh, in our Q&A session. I know some of you are watching us uh, here uh, over Golden Eden, some of you are watching us over uh, YouTube Live, so I'm also getting some questions from you. So we'll address those questions in Q&A session. Uh, let me introduce our company uh, briefly, and now let's talk about QDMS, uh, how it is actually complementing our Cumetica ERP system, and then we'll also address your questions. Uh, uh, our company is BIMSTRI International, and we are based in New York. We are an enterprise software maker since 1998. We also cater uh, mid-market as well, especially with our partnership with our Cumetica ERP system. So uh, as uh, a company, we help organizations adopt digital transformation and, and help companies simplify their business processes. We are very close to various uh, ERP, uh, we are very close to very, uh, different uh, business communities, I must say. Uh, quality management is one of them, uh, manufacturing, service, banking, 
we are very close to these uh, business communities. The reason being, we like to also learn from them and understand their challenges so that we can help them adopt digital transformation in their own uh, vertical. Uh, they also have an internship program for university students. We call it Universal of BMC International. We teach how to do pre-sale and software engineering. Uh, we have global presence, as you see on the screen. While we are based in New York, we are also active in uh, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Asia. Uh, we are very active in various ERT ecosystems. Acumetica is one of them. We are Uh, since 1990, we focus on our uh, four products. We develop only these four products, EVA, BIM, QDMS, and Ensemble. Today, we focus on the QDMS part, our quality, risk, audit, and compliance management software. In addition, we have EVA for workflow and document management. We have BIM for asset maintenance and uh, facility management. And we have Ensemble for intelligent business process management, as well as uh, performance management. Uh, since uh, 1998, we devel delivered many different projects, as you see on the screen. Uh, these numbers also show more or less how many customers we have. Uh, we have, as you see, uh, we have thousands of customers, corporate customers, and millions of professional users. And these numbers are increasing on on monthly basis. Uh, some of our references, uh, we have a lot of uh, reputable companies working uh, with us. We have the privilege of serving them. So we have, uh, for example, we work with Tria, we work with Bridgestone, Ford, Hyundai, um, uh, Nissan, United Nations, one of our customers, and many other reputable organizations also uh, choose uh, to use our products. So let's talk about QDMS a little bit and how it is actually complementing Acumetica as it's an, it's an uh, Acumetica certified solution. Uh, QDMS is a quality risk audit and compliance management uh, software. Uh, we have been developing it since uh, 1998, so it is actually very mature and very reliable uh, software. Uh, it basically has right now more than 1,000 corporate customers and more than uh, professional users. So these, uh, these important figures it also show that basically uh, rely on QDMS its capabilities, and these numbers are increasing. So. Uh, with the help of QDMS, you can comply with many different uh, quality management systems, ISO 9001, ISO 14000, in food and beverage industry, ISO 22000 in, in food and beverage industry. You can comply with, if you're in aerospace industry, you can comply with AS9100, for example, and many other standards you can comply. Uh, QDMS has a very modern technology. It is actually web-based. Uh, it works on cloud as well as on-premise servers, and you can access it with a web browser. And once we uh, train you, uh, once we train the quality management uh, team members, they can basically, uh, you can basically manage the QDMS yourself. It's pretty user-friendly. Once we train you, you can basically uh, manage the entire system, and you don't need much of an IT support or consultancy support since it's pretty uh, easy to use. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, QDMS is an Acumetica uh, certified solution. Earlier uh, in this webinar, uh, we also showed QDMS and Acumetica working together in one screen, uh, integrated. Uh, that was a, a great uh, demonstration that Sam actually performed. And uh, many companies actually enjoy the benefits of QDMS. Now it's available in Acumetica ecosystem, and we really appreciate the interest and requests and inquiries we keep getting from Acumetica ERP ecosystem. Uh, since QDMS has a, a modern technology, just like Acumetica, there, there are a lot of similarities in, the, in terms of technology and, and the back end. Uh, QDMS is already integrated with Acumetica to pull and push data uh, for uh, many different functions like control document management, uh, customer complaint, audit management, uh, calibration management, as we uh, talked about and demonstrated earlier today. And uh, many other functions are already available with Acumetica and QDMS to make sure you can comply these standards seamlessly as to uh, ISO, SQS, ERC, or ISO 22000 in food and beverage industry, SQS in 
food and beverage industry, ISO 13485 in medical device industry, and so on. Uh, in addition to uh, Acumetica, if you have a CRM system, manufacturing execution system, or IoT devices for as for smart sensors, QDMS is ready to integrate so that we can have an integrated management system in a digital environment so you can avoid double entry. QDMS has modular structure. Uh, this part is also very similar to Acumetica ERP system. So we are not trying to offer entire system. You can pick and choose what you need based on what you comply with. Uh, whether you are complying with HPF or BRC or ISO, uh, you can decide which, which modules you can cho you choose and which modules you basically can, uh, uh, can use and uh, digitize as to comply with your quality management standards. Um, nevertheless, there are, there are actually uh, similarities uh, regardless of what you comply. All of these quality management systems I listed on the uh, bottom left of the, of the, of the slide they ask you to basically document your activity. Uh, Alex also touched base on that earlier uh, with regards to calibration management. You have to have control points in your call for management operations. You need to control, you need to have control points in your manufacturing, you need to have control points in your administrative operations, purchasing, sales, marketing. Uh, also, you need to get feedback from your customers, from your team members, from your stakeholders, so that you can analyze it for feedback. And you can also uh, take lessons out of it for corrective action, right? So when the corrective actions take place, you need to also communicate it with your team members. So you can actually increase your company's performance as well as individual performance uh, as well. Uh, as for uh, vertical, QDMS is actually vertical free. You can actually um, use QDMS in any industry. But just to name some of them, food and beverage industry, manufacturing, uh, service, aerospace, defense, automotive, chemical, healthcare, pharmaceutical industry, construction, uh, medical device, that's also another heavily regulated industry that you need to uh, comply. And the more you, you digitize this, it's gonna be easier for you to uh, manage. Uh, earlier today, Sam demonstrated control document management module uh, and also calibration module, how you can manage your calibration operation digitally. Uh, when we say calibrations, we are talking about equipment and devices, and you need to calibrate them, you need to adjust them from time to time. That may be monthly basis, that may be weekly basis, that may be quarterly or any other, depends on your equipment or device. Also, when you are doing this calibration operations, you need to also follow instructions. These instructions may be your checklist, maybe your procedures, maybe your SOP, so you need to have documents in place. So that is why controlled document management module is very important to manage your uh, policies, procedures, SOPs, and other documentations to make sure you are sharing the uh, current and accurate instructions with your team members in a digital environment. Okay, great. So we have uh, right now a Q&A session. Uh, some of you already sent me your questions so we can address them. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat box. Uh, if you watch us on YouTube live, you can also type out your questions over YouTube and we can address them right now. So some of the questions that I can address is one of the questions about the mobile application. Uh, for audit management, do we have mobile app available if we are doing on-site audits so that we can use the mobile application? Sam, you want to address this question? Oh, yes. That's a very nice question. So QDMS has its native mobile application. So it is available for Android and iOS device. So you can download it from Google Play Store or uh, the App Store and connect to um, QDMS. So you will see the same data set that you can see in the web browser on your mobile application because they are coming from and going to the same database. And in the question you ask about the audit. So yes, you can manage your audit operation by using your handheld device like smartphone or tablet and you can carry out the on-site audit. And in addition, you can also record the answer that you get from the audit key by using your handheld device. And also you can upload all the picture, for example, that you take by your uh, smartphone and upload it to QDMS as well. Great, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Alex, uh, there is a question uh, for you. Uh, as for calibration measurement, do we have to comply with ISO to perform those calibration fundamentals, or do you also recommend it to any company in manufacturing industry?
Yes. Okay, uh, to um, answer your question, Kevin, uh, yes. in order uh, for you, if you are a, a certified, ISO certified uh, organization, then you should follow, obviously, the guidelines that uh, ISO poses on, you know, calibration uh, requirements. Uh, now, a lot of it is pretty straightforward because the whatever equipment you have, uh, the equipment manufacturer provides the requirements for calibration uh, and maintenance. Uh, so what really ISO requires you to do is that to follow that particular schedule that's imposed by the equipment manufacturer and that all that information is recorded uh, so that you can uh, verify that any particular data uh, you know, if that is taken, uh, is you have been using equipment that's been formally calibrated. Now, for example, certainly if you uh, deliver in the um, avionics environment, uh, the uh, the final testing of the equipment must use val uh, calibrated equipment, uh, and and if they're not then the whole test is invalidated. Uh, so in, in a way, uh, ISO just imposes forces that process uh, you know, to the, within the organization to make sure that it happens because, you know, who wants to rerun a test just because the equipment was not, uh, didn't have the proper calibration, uh, calibration sticker? Of course not, okay. So, so really, ISO kind of enforces that discipline uh, of maintaining um, you know, all of your, your equipment to have the, the latest calibration uh, requirements. So I hope that answers your question, but uh, uh, that's what I, I understood it to be. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank, thank you very much, Alex. Much appreciated. So, um, well, that is, I agree. I mean, definitely the, um, the calibration is actually vital, especially for manufacturing any device and equipment that you're actually running. And you need to make sure that actually uh, it is actually operating as it should be, so that it can be reliable. Uh, the measurements, the tests, so that is uh, very very important. But great question, uh, much appreciated. Uh, another question that we have is about uh, QDMS and Ultimatica integration. What are the integration points while QDMS is working in the same streams of Ultimatica? Well, that's a great question. So um, we have right now a fundamental integration. Uh, with uh, Acumetica. We are pulling all the master data as to your customers, your suppliers, your vendors, your products. We also send back information as to your cost. For example, if you take a corrective action, the corrective action is very important for continuous improvement, uh, but at the same time, it has a cost, right? So these costs also be sent back to Acumetica at the same time. So this is uh, a fundamental integration that we have. So when we deploy QDMS for any Acumetica ERP customer, and if there is interest, then we basically further this integration. Depends on the uh, compliance requirements. You may be in food and beverage industry, that's uh, one of them. You may be in pharmaceutical industry, that's another of them, for example, or aerospace. Then you let us know uh, what you need to pull and push uh, Acumetica with between QDMS and uh, also Acumetica. We basically further our integration pretty quickly. And as we demonstrated earlier, Acumetica and QDMS, they work in one screen. So with the latest uh, improvements that we actually put together, right now you don't have to jump from one screen to another. You can use QDMS for quality and quality assurance purposes, and Acumetica on the same screen, which is great. I mean, uh, not only these two great products are integrated, now they work in the same screen. So it is extremely user-friendly. That is also the feedback that we keep getting from our customers. And uh, also you can access data anytime you like as for uh, quality management, compliance management, continuous improvement, as well as calibration management. I hope this addresses your question. And also we keep our uh, email addresses on the screen. So if you'd like to continue this conversation, if you'd like to schedule a one-to-one -one meeting, you can send us an email and we can schedule a meeting and we can talk further uh, specifically as to your, your requirements, your business requirements and your expectations. We'll be happy to talk uh, further about it. Uh, we have another question. Uh, this question is about, do you have any corrective action uh, management module and analysis capability? So um, I, can, I think I can address this question, Sam, if I may. So 
As for corrective action, we have a corrective action module in QDMS. I had a list of uh, modules uh, earlier. They are not all of them, by the way, they are just major, they were the major modules I demonstrated, uh, I presented. We have more than 30 modules right now. I didn't list all of them. So one of them is actually corrective action module, which was on, which was on, my, uh, on my slide. So corrective action module basically uh, helps you take action as to corrective actions, right? So corrective actions are important for con continuous improvement for food and beverage industry, for aerospace, healthcare, as well as medical device industry. Uh, to be honest with you, for any industry, that's very important. So uh, with the help of corrective action module, you can uh, actually take corrective actions. You can write your, you can record your, your, your source as to taking, uh, as to take corrective actions. And we have a section for you to actually perform analysis. This is the most critical part. Not only you record your uh, findings in QDMS as for corrective actions, you can also also perform your corrective action analysis. For example, Five Y, Ishikawa. For example, uh, it's also called, as you know, it's also called uh, Fishbone. Uh, you can also perform AP analysis. These are all ASQ American Society for Quality uh, recommended approach for corrective actions. And you can perform all these digitally in QDMS. This is a great tool to have for any quality manager because otherwise you need to use spreadsheets or uh, other word files and the data will be unstructured. And when the time comes for inspection or audit, or, or certification uh, 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 inspections, for example, it's gonna be difficult for you to put everything together. SQF, BRC, some of them, these are heavily regulated industries and uh, standards. So with the help of QDMS, you run it on day-to-day -day basis, all of your corrective actions, control back management, your SOPs, your customer complaints, all the information, everything is together, you can use them and then you can perform them. Also, you can also present it to the auditors, which is great. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, QDMS is designed to run standalone. You can use it standalone. Also, as an option, uh, we further it, and you can also use it with Acumatica in the same screens of Acumatica ERP system. So that's uh, also very user-friendly, as I mentioned earlier, and as, you, as Sam demonstrated earlier in this webinar. Great, I think uh, we addressed more, uh, most of the questions. There are some other questions that uh, I'll basically get back to you uh, via email, some of them about pricing or, or licensing. So uh, it all depends on the modules that you pick. Uh, that's very important. And that's how we do the pricing. But the, for further information for pricing, I think uh, we should uh, take this conversation offline. Okay, great. I think we addressed uh, most of the questions. Uh, and. Uh, as I mentioned, please uh, shoot us an email uh, for further discussions and we can have a meeting uh, for one-to-one -one, uh, discussion. Before we end our webinar, I'd like to invite you to our YouTube channel. Some of you already on our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube Live, you are already watching us. We have a very active YouTube channel. We have uh, weekly postings about our products, about our webinars, about education and information and content that we put our YouTube channel on a weekly basis. Please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be uh, up to date about our activities. Also, you know our uh, event rate page. Uh, we uh, encourage you to visit our event rate page. We have uh, an executive webinar lineup. You can uh, see what type of uh, webinars uh, are coming up, and you can pick and choose uh, which one you'd like to watch, and you can register. That'd be great. I'd like to thank you for your time, and thank you for your interest. We are looking forward to seeing you in our coming executive webinar session. Thank you, and have a nice day.